Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to Back Break Studio. It's Mark Spencer and I. Um, what, are you, what are you doing? What am I doing? Yeah, what are you doing? I'm lighting candles. I see that. Why are you lighting candles? Because this is our 200th episode. Ah, so it's yeah. like a bir- we're having a birthday party. Sort of. A little bit of excitement, right? 200 <laughs> is a big number. 200 is a big number. So apparently we're at our 200th episode of MacBreak Studio. And we wanted to thank you for watching since episode one. If you've been watching episode one, thank you. Yeah, we'll bring it back up. We'll do an encore of episode one. I don't even know what that is. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. And uh, today we're going to dive back into motion, back into 3D in motion with Mark Spencer. How are you doing, Alex? Good. Good to see you back. Thank you. So, uh, so what do we have here? Yes, but yeah. thank you for watching 200 episodes. So we're now going to do a tutorial now we're on do how to blow out candles. <laughs> Let's leave them burning. Um, so, can we talk a little bit about uh, Final Cut Pro? <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, what I wanted to talk a little bit about today was something. Uh, it's a little arcane. It's a little hidden. But sometimes when you bring assets into Final Cut Pro, they may not show up the way you expect them to. Um, that's because you don't know what you're doing. Uh, well, maybe because Final Cut Pro doesn't really understand some aspects or some characteristics of either your stills or your video. Oh, okay. So this is related to like importing stuff, and then you put it in the timeline. It's like it's not quite. It doesn't look right. right. It doesn't look right. right. Exactly. Okay. It doesn't All look right. right. And how do you fix that? All right. So excellent. Um, and at, most of the time, Final Cut does a great job of figuring out things. But mm-hmm. once in a while, if it doesn't, this is what you can do to, to fix it. So um, my first example here, I've got a, I've got a little um, event called MBS here, and uh, in this event, I have little smart collections and I have some stills. And you can see this is a magnifying glass, and this is a, a girl. It says girl red. And it looks kind of odd there. It doesn't look quite right. And if we look in the timeline, these guys both have transparency. Right? They have transparent backgrounds. They're saved as either Photoshop files, .psds, or as PNGs, or TIFFs, some, some format that, that supports transparency. So in the timeline, we can see this uh, magnifying glass. We can see this kind of purple background behind it. I have a little generator from the Motions uh, Generators browser behind it. And that works great. But when I go to this picture of the of the lady here, we don't see the purple background at all, and we see this strange stuff going on around behind her. I see. Was well, it supposed to be transparent with the it's white? It's supposed is? to be transparent. Yeah. If you open this up in Photoshop or some photo editing application, you would see it has a transparent background. So the deal is, what happened? Why does it not have a transparent background? I mean, is there any way to quickly tell in the event library where if it has an alpha channel begin? I can just. I mean, the thumbnail doesn't give any indication it, of that. It at really all. doesn't. What you can do is you can go into list view, and then if you right click on one of these guys, you can go down and get information on the media type, uh, file type, and from there, because I don't think there's actually an alpha channel checkbox like, 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 like kind of used to be in, in legacy versions, but you can get a file type and see it's portable network graphics image. It's a PNG, which has the capability of holding an alpha channel, right. but it doesn't imply there's necessarily one. But let's say you know, like, hey, I made this thing. It's got to have transparency. How do you fix it? So that's right. kind of the point is how do you fix it? Yeah. So what you need to do, you can select it either in the event or down in the project. It doesn't matter. And you go to the inspector. And I'm on the info section of the inspector here. And by default, uh, there's not going to be anything in here to help you. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Just go over here for no reason at all. (laughs) Right. But if we scroll down a little bit, we're looking at the basic view Uh, right now. Basic metadata view. Yes. But if we use this pop-up menu, there's all kind of views in here. And you've talked before about how you can sort of create your own views, right? But I'm going to go down to this last one called the settings view. Because if we choose the settings view and come back up now, we've got a a whole different set of of things. Mm -hmm. And one of them is alpha handling. And you can see it says none or ignore alpha. So if I use that pop-up menu, there's options for straight or pre-multiply, okay? So uh, which do you use? Uh, It really depends. So I'm gonna choose straight here. And you see right away, the background's knocked out. That's the event browser version. And if I go down to the project and click off of it for a minute. It should update. Hmm, it should update. Let's go to pre-multiply. Yeah, we should certainly, you can see a little bit of edge detail came in the pre multiple. We don't want that. We want straight. And we should definitely see it on the background now. So uh, let's just go ahead and put it back in here and see what's going on there. 
There she is on the background. Just needed so a little. It's almost like the graphics card didn't refresh it. With yeah, the, uh, that was kind of weird because it's you know I, when I did this before, it worked it worked uh, just fine. So um, the main thing is just to change the interpretation to be able to see the alpha channel. Right. In the case I did need need to refresh it. Now this can happen with video as well, because here I have a clip that is a um, a video clip that was saved from motion with the animation codec, and I was trying to trick Final Cut. Because um, Final Cut recognizes ProRes 4444 sure. with transparency right away, and I was thinking maybe I could trick it with the animation codec. It didn't trick it, uh, so you, this may not happen as an issue, but if it does, uh, I, I went ahead and just sort of forced it. But right now you can see there's no transparency with this little animation, right? It's just on black. Right. But once again, if we go up to the settings view in the info tab of the inspector, we have this alpha handling section uh, for video as well. And if we switch that to, say, straight, um, notice here with straight, the ball has kind of a black edge there. Here, let's go to pre-multiply. And see how it just got uh, nicer? Right. OK, so it really depends on how the transparency was created in the first place, um, whether it's going to look better pre-multiplied or straight. So you really have to try each of these. Because in the previous example, straight was better. In this case, pre-multiplied. No, in After Effects, I know that there's a default mm -hmm. rendering out. I, I, I believe it's. Isn't it pre-multiplied? It's been a while since I've asked yeah, yeah, usually you're pre-multiplied into whatever your background color was. Right. So in this case, this was pre-multiplied against a black background, mm -hmm. and you want to kind of get that out. So you would set it to pre-multiply. And then just one other example is um, those had to do with transparency, but video has other properties as well that can be misinterpreted, like um, whether it's been anamorphically squeezed if you're working with standard definition material, or the um, if you're working with interlaced material if it's been right. properly inter uh, interpreted as lower or, or upper, upper field. So I have the, I have a clip here which is a standard definition clip, and if I select it, we can see up in the uh, info area of the settings view, we've got. Um, not only the alpha handling, but the field dominance is lower field mm -hmm. first. But right. if that was wrong, you can change it, sure. upper field or progressive. And then also anamorphic. Um, if it's coming in with a ran wrong, and this is an anamorphic DV clip right here. If I set it to standard, you can That's see it, it would... squeezes. This is the way it would look incorrect, right? right? But um, if it comes in looking like this, then you can switch this to widescreen. And in this case, none set means it's being interpreted by Final Cut Pro That's correctly. Correctly. Right. right. So not something you're going to come across every day, but if you are bringing clips and you, you have a problem where you don't have the transparency you expected, or you've got some fringing around the transparency, this can really save you um, some real head scratching and digging around to try to figure out what's going on. Yeah, it's, uh, Final Cut 7, I remember you used to have like a little checkbox in the event browser where you could just check it. So yeah, you yeah, get yeah. The inspector and yeah, and, and do it in there. But that's that's where it hides in this little settings view of the info inspector. Excellent. So that uh, concludes our 200th anniversary <laughs> edition of uh, MacBreak Studio. We want to thank you for watching us and uh, checking out our website, our tutorials. Mark's got some great motion tutorials and Final Cut. And again, thanks for watching MacBreak Studio. Thank you.